We're not selling Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is not a commodity. Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we've got some antics at First Baptist Orlando. Quite a few different things. We gotta talk about it. Coming up next. All right, good morning, good morning. Sponsor. It's true. First Baptist Orlando is like many other Southern Baptist churches, I fear, and many other churches in general, that is not doing what the Lord calls them to do. We're going to be looking at some clips, three different clips in particular. Uh, this first one's from Doctrinal Watchdog. You might know him online. And uh, usually has a lot of clips of random people, kind of like woke preacher clips, but does other stuff as well. Um, yeah, worth looking at. So we're going to talk about it because it's needed. We have transgender, LGBTQ, and cohabitating people. What's wrong with you people? These same people attend, listen, serve, grow, and give. I mean, this is what's wrong with the Christian church today. We don't know who God is, and we don't know who we are. All right, so this clips, um, they're calling out Ligonier Ministries because Ligonier Ministries in Orlando, Florida, is a Presbyterian, Calvinist, more uh, Calvinist Reformed, uh, very helpful even if you're not lean that way. Uh, I've got a lot of just really high glory of God, high view of Scripture and everything else. But they're going to have a conference here pretty soon. At least that was the plan. I don't know if any of that's changed at First Baptist Orlando. So it's a Baptist church. They're going to have the conference, but this is a Presbyterian, but you know, we're Christians, right? Now, cohabitating people, that's just fornication. Idolaters, fornicators, God will judge. We see the list. There's multiple lists in scripture that talk about uh, all these sins. I mean, Romans 1 doesn't talk about just homosexuality or, or, or uh, same-sex attraction or anything like that. It talks about being disobedient to parents, thieves, idolaters, right? And all, all of us are, are some of those things. There's scarcely as you're going to find somebody who's everything. But right now we have this moment where, you know, the LGBT stuff is the most prominent. And okay, well, 50 years ago, it was something else. 100 years ago, it was something else. 50 years from now, it'll be something else. But people think like, well, that's, that's the unforgivable sin. No, it's not. That's worse than other stuff. No, it's not. Not according to the scripture. Now, I understand, you know, societal issues there might be. But such were some of you, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians. And, like, that matters. And yet these guys here at First Baptist Orlando are like, yeah, you know, cohabitating people, playing house, right? Why, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free, as the saying goes? If you're doing all the marriage stuff without standing in front of people, and God, and a minister of the gospel, and say, I'm committing my life to this woman. I love this woman. I'm, I'm dumb, because, you know, you're probably in your 20s, maybe 30s, and you don't know a lot, right? We all don't know a lot. We all think we know a lot at that time, because it's that time. We're not older yet. And yet, you look back, and you're like, man, I was an idiot. I mean, if you're like me, anyway. Um, but nevertheless, we think that, and think, all right, now what do we do? We, we live, we grow, we're committed to this person sexually only, right? Fidelity. We're, we're sharing bank accounts. She's taken my name. We're doing stuff together. We're submitting unto the Lord. Let's look at a couple Bible verses that really show what we're looking at. Because a lot of times people don't know what the church is. Is the church evangelistic outreach mission? Or is it the gathered body of believers who worship the triune God? at least weekly, if not multiple times a week, community group, ladies group, fellowshipping, serving people, going out, doing, you know, uh, projects, whatever. What is it? What is the church? Well, church ultimately is gather body of believers. Ephesians 5, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Ah, it's hard, I know, I know. Second wave feminism echoing in the back of your mind. I get it. Even if you're a Christian, you love Jesus, it's still there. We've breathed it in for most of our, our whole lives. 
For the husband's the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and he himself is the Savior. And now the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their own husbands and everything. Or submit and everything, whatever. Husbands, so that's a tall task, right? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Also a tall task. That he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word. So that he might present the church to himself in all its splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. She might be holy without blemish. That's massive, ladies and gentlemen. Massive. And so if that's not the case, if that's not what we're doing, if that's not what we're called to do, what, what are we doing here? What's going on? What is the church? Is it outreach? Is it missions? Well, there are those things that go on, but that's not the primary function of the church. Okay? The primary function of the church is worshiping the Lord Jesus. In fact, marriage itself is a picture of the gospel. Right? Christ and his church. So fornicating whatever people, this and that people, that's not it at all. Magazine to help churches be better churches. It's called Outreach. Listen to them quoting an article, okay? When a non-Christian is allowed to be a full participant in a community and get an up-close look at what difference the gospel actually makes in people, he or she is given a front row seat to the working of the Holy Spirit in our midst. To say people who don't yet know whether they want to give their lives to Jesus, you can't serve here, your voice won't be heard, that's a quick way to shut down the process of their discovering whether or not Jesus is even someone they want to give their life to. Okay, so a quick way to shut down the process. Like you're buying a house and the realtor says something dumb and the person's like, ah, oh, I don't know, man. You kind of sound like a dirtbag. You kind of sound like you just, you, you sound like a misogynist. You sound like you're, you're against second wave feminism or my right to choose or my right to live in fornication or my right to, you know, exercise any of my sexual deviancy as I want. Nah. <laughs> like, we're not selling Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is not a commodity. I want to give my life to, you know, let's just try this Jesus thing out. Okay, first of all, I understand there are certain waves of evangelism and missions and everything else. I understand that some functions better than others, some uh, things work, right? You know, there's, I've got an art, uh, a uh, uh, conversation with Jay Wedker. He's my, my mentor for a long time. Uh, I still talk to him quite regularly and had a conversation with him, Contra Talk, uh, which I post on those on Saturdays now. Those are pretty consistently on Saturdays. So longer form, different than what I'm doing right now, where I'm talking to another individual. And uh, he was saved in the 70s during the Jesus movement. And, you know, there's, it's California and it's kind of free loving and this and that. And people are coming out of that, right? They're coming out of that. They're not living in fornication, living in idolatry, living in sexual immorality and, and sensuality and everything else. I mean, the Bible is explicit, like multiple times over explicit about how fornicating, living together, homosexuality, adultery, all this stuff, divorce is wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's, and yet, the Bible hasn't changed. Society has changed. And because society continues to press down, the church so often doesn't stand, but like this one, is squishy. And there are, well, if they're a full participant, <clears throat> they get to see up close what Jesus is all about. No, that's not, he's serving, he's, this guy and the other guy, the two different guys, uh, they're both pastors there, I believe. If they don't get to be allowed in and, you know, get the cow's milk for free, then they're not going to commit to more things. Like, if you're not a member of a church, you're not going to feel obligated to give. You're not going to feel obligated to show up to business meetings. You're not going to feel obligated. We shouldn't show up to business meetings anyway because you're not a member. Uh, deciding how we should do this thing called church. The church is the gathered body of believers. Now, I would argue that it's not necessarily even a new thing. Even in the old, in the New Testament, we see gathered body of faithful God followers, covenant people of God in the Old Testament. But regardless, however you take it, whether you think the church, quote unquote, started in Acts 2, and there was no church before that, you know, and then that kind of goes like, well, Israel and church and a little different. Or you say, 
Adam and Eve were in the church. Noah was in the church, etc. Again, there's not many verses that specifically say this, but the Old Testament translation, the Hebrew or the uh, Greek, the Septuagint, uses ekklesia, the same word we use in the New Testament. So it's in there, in the Greek. But a lot of translators, especially the King James, calls, uh, yeah, that's, that's another topic. I'm talking about that. Point is, what is the church? What's the point of the church? And these people, you know, they need to be up close and personal. Really see if they want to commit to Jesus. I mean, yeah, sure. But you can see that when you see the husband loving his wife, opening the door for her, serving her, doing the things he's called to do, leading her, calling his children, calling her and others to repentance through grace, through gentleness, through example, through what the Bible says. You can see the ladies busily working at home that Paul calls them to do. Doesn't mean you can't have a job outside the home. But if your job inside the home is failing, your out job outside the home is also failing. Oh, uh, and it's just like sandpaper and it hurts, right? Some of you probably even now, you're probably like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Let the word of the Lord guide you. Let the spirit, let him dwell in you. Why do you? Why do we do what we do? Whatever it is, men, women, whatever. Unbelievers will see you're different. How many, how many unbelievers do you have examples of testimony? I just heard one recently um, with a lady just got baptized a couple months ago because her marriage is a wreck, terrible, divorce, everything else. And she saw how he treated his wife and how she treated him. The co-worker of this guy. And him and the wife, him and his wife, especially the wife, started talking, ministering, preaching the gospel to this lady, loving on her, right? And being kind with her, but not letting her stay there and say, oh yeah, you're fine in your sin. You're not fine in your sin. No one's fine. I'm not fine in my sin and neither are you. Leaving people alone, quote unquote, to see, you know, do you want to buy some Jesus? You know, how about, how about, how about two for the price of one? Two doses of Christ for the price of one. After all, he's on sale right now. I mean, like, it's garbage. It's nonsense. Now, I understand they don't talk all those exact words, but that's how they're, ins that's what they're insinuating. How are we to have a Matthew 18 scenario? How are we to have these things to say, if your brother sins against you, go comfort confront him privately. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. If not, then take two, one or two along with you, so that every matter, quote unquote, may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses, quote in the Old Testament. So this affirmation of the Old Testament. He refuses, if he refuses to listen to them, tell to the church. What's the church? Oh, this is Matthew 18. This is before the establishment of the church. See, I would disagree. Because yes, this is before the quote unquote establishment of the church. But in one sense, there's still, there's still gathered bodies of people throughout, right? Just because they don't have a building, right? Get your mind out of the head. The, the building is not the church. It's not. Whether it's 500,000 year old building, it's magnificent and wonderful, or it's a silly elementary school or whatever, your home church. Do you look at your home and say, oh, it's a home church. It's church. No. But we have such this cultural thing to think, oh, well, this building is the church. It's not. It's just something that facilitates the ease of worship, makes things easier for us. Sometimes we don't want things easier. What do we do here? What are we doing here? What is the church? What are we supposed to do? Is it just, oh, let these people be full active participants? Well, that's not in the scripture at all. There's no explanation of this. There's nothing seen. Calling out of darkness. Come out of the dark into the light. Jesus can wash you. He can and will wash you. His promises, his life-giving gospel is better in every way. Every way. And yet, First Baptist Orlando is saying, yeah, you know, just live, fornicate, homosexuality, uh, pornography, adultery, whatever. It's not, not that big of a deal. That's what these two guys are saying. Now, did they say those explicit words? No, no. But that's what their implications are with all the softness of, oh, yeah, let these people do this. This is just a club. Come on in. You want to buy some Jesus? Yeah, cool. If not, no big deal. You know, no big deal. Now, in one sense, it is, quote unquote, no big deal, earthly wise, because you can't force somebody to believe. Rather, we should reason like Paul did all day long with them and say, your life is not right. 
that hole, that hole in your heart, quote unquote, or or that conviction you feel, that thing that you you just you just can't satisfy, whether it's money or whether it's sex, whether it's drugs, whether it's whatever, pornography, whether it's just you know the scroll, 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 scroll. We're never satisfied as human beings. We must find our rest in God. Period. And you're only going to be complete, perfect. That's really what it means, just complete. In Christ, when you're in Christ. That's it. That's the good news. That's the gospel. And if you're not there, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're watching this, be there. Get there. He will take you. He will wash you clean and make you new. But you're not doing it. And you staying there, bad news. The other thing, too, is you have to remember sanctification, now you, salvation. You come to faith, you realize, I'm a sinner. I can't do this life on my own. I've surrendered. I raised a white flag. But then there's this process of sanctification. Sure, you might be 30. You might be 50. You should, quote unquote, be more spiritual than you are, but you're not. Well, read the Bible. Memorize. Get into a good church. Get into a community group. Be vulnerable and accountable to other people. That's how you're sanctified. Sing good songs, read good books, not any songs in any books. Just like food, you can't just be like, well, you know, so long as you're eating, so long as you're reading, so long as you're listening to music, so long as you're listening to sermons. No, they have to be good. <laughs> they have to be biblical. They have to be orthodox. They have to be, you know, historic something based in uh, the scripture, not just anything. Nobody would say, you know, of a five year old, well, so he's eating, and all he's eating is dry top ramen from your know, cup of noodle from the container, the pa plastic package. Like, you got to eat some fruit, kid. You got to drink some milk. You got to do something, right? <laughs> like, oh, he's eating. So long as he's eating. Yeah, it might work for like a day, and then, you know, you're getting malnourished because all you're eating is cup of noodle. Bad news. This was at First Baptist Orlando, another guy, different preacher, missionary Baptist, I think, preaching the sermon or some of the sermon of uh, the people who got killed at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. It was a gay bar, gay nightclub a number of years ago. They had the service here. We won't even get into that. Uh, it's too much. We're just going to listen to this. And what others would have against us, what others would show as a stumbling stone, we've elevated to be the head of the corner. And right now, no matter what the presence and people of mine may think, that LBGTQ area is the head cornerstone. And we are here to lift up and magnify and allow them to know that regardless of people's opinion, regardless of where we are, love triumphs over evil. That is blasphemous, ladies and gentlemen. Blasphemous. Not only, not only, as the service goes on, they basically usher these people into heaven. Um, as one person said, that was Justin Peters who was talking about it. I can't fully say because I didn't even watch it because I just, I'm too busy. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I've got, we've all, you all got stuff to do, right? And I appreciate you taking some time and watching this with me. This is blasphemous. He literally just said, he said the acronym wrong, so whatever, but the LGBT community, or I'm stopping at T. I'm not going past T because it's just silly. We, I mean, some of these is just like 10 letters. And you're like, just stop. Just stop. This is all about self-expression, which is self-idolatry. It's self-worship. That's all it is. It has very little to do with sexual orientation or lack thereof. They're worshiping and serving the creature themselves rather than the creator who is blessed, who's blessed forever. That's what it is. Mark this, know this. This isn't about marginalization and this and acceptance and all this other stuff. No, they're idolaters, just like every other person who's an unrepentant sinner outside of Christ. Whether it's a golden calf, whether it's Molech and they're killing their babies, Israel, mind you, killing their babies just as people kill their babies with Planned Parenthood now. And that is Molech, our modern Molech throwing babies into the furnace of this metal statue that's this bull god. <clears throat> that was Molech. Go check it out. Whether it's the prophets of Baal and Elijah dancing, or them dancing and Elijah calling them out, he literally just said that these guys are the cornerstone. 
Mm. Psalm 118.22, the stone the builders rejected become the corner, has become the cornerstone. I mean, this man has never read the Bible, apparently. <laughs> I mean, there, there's no, like, what are you doing? Like, how can you even say that? Like, so blasphemous, false teaching, if not just straight out heresy. I think heresy is the last step. False teaching and, and saying missteps, and, and I've, I'm sure I've said something that's false, right? We all have. But if you're corrected in it, and somebody said, hey, that wasn't quite right. Oh, what did you mean by this? And you you clarify, okay, that's different. But if you're resolving, then you become a heretic where you're seeking to not only speak false teaching, but then divide off people. This man's a divisive man. I don't know anything else about him other than this slight clip here. But he literally just said the LGBT community, quote unquote community. We only talk about them with a community. I don't know why. Um, we don't have like, you know, other communities like the thieving community, the bank robbing community, the, the, um, coveting community, the whatever community Ephesians two, by abolishing the law and commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create himself one new man in the place of two. So making peace, God makes peace, not you, not your cleaning up your life, not your whatever act that you're doing that he might reconcile both to God one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he, listen to that, killing the hostility. It's dead. You were dead. You were separate. You were away from Christ. You became alive through faith in Jesus. And then you die. You kill. You mortify the flesh. He came and preached peace to those who were far off and peace to those who were near. Those who were living in abject sin, those who were in the gutter, literally high, drunk, stoned, whatever you want to call it, having sex with as many people as they possibly can, trying to fill that, you know, God-shaped hole in their heart. And those are the far off. And then there's the people who are near, those people who go to church, those people who are basically just Pharisees doing the outward, yet their heart is far from them, but they're close, they're near. In the sense, oh, I know the Bible verses, yeah, Noah's Ark, this, yeah, David, King David, Goliath, uh, okay. Far and near. The gospel's for everybody. Far and near. For through him, we have both access in one spirit. So notice, it's through him. Through him. It's not the fact that you're by yourself doing this thing. It's through him. Through him. That makes a difference. Massive difference. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but fellow citizens and saints. But on the founding foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows in a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together in a dwelling place of God by the Spirit. What are we supposed to do with this? Well, we call out the false teaching because this is false teaching. This is nonsense. This man is on his way to straight heresy, seeking to divide people. Again, I don't know how much this guy regularly teaches like this, but he literally just said that this thing, community, is the chief cornerstone. I don't care what people say or think and love triumphs. Yes, God's love triumphs. Love wins in the end. God's love wins in the end for wicked, rebellious sinners who submit to him. That's what the Bible says. Now, if you don't want to be a Christian, that's fine. Fine. God deals with you. That's not my, that's not my ultimate. I'm not judging you. You know, we don't judge outsiders, Paul tells us. But we judge those inside the church. And friend, you're inside the church. Or, you know, it sure seems like you are. You're wrong, sir. You're woefully wrong. FBC Orlando should repent of this nonsense. And this was a standing ovation, mind you. And obviously some of these people had to have been, probably not all believers, certainly, but had to have been First Baptist Orlando congregants. And they stand for a guy who says the chief cornerstone is the LGBT community? Like, I'm just... 
if the, if there isn't a more clear cut, other than someone standing up and saying we all should worship Baphomet and Satan and Baal and Molech instead of Jesus, without somebody saying that, like these people are the chief cornerstone. No, Christ is the cornerstone. Have you read your Bible, sir? Have you read your Bible? I gotta stop because this is raising my blood pressure. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, please do that. Uh, do the three-piece special, as my buddy calls it. Uh, like, share, comment, and like I said, subscribe if you have not already. I know I've got a number of people, most people, at least anywhere from half to 75% of y'all um, are watching, are already subscribed, uh, which I appreciate. So thank you so much. Again, be against the world for the world, okay? Because this is wrong. FBC, Orlando's wrong. Be against them, but for their sake. Because Jesus is better. The gospel is better. It is life to the dead. It is, it is goodness. It is, it is the balm. It is, it is everything, the healing to the sick. I did not call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus reminds us. All right. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you.